Blues Bluey Stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. Shorty Kellums is so fond of? Yes, how is the little darling? He's getting married tomorrow. The wedding's gonna be at our place. Would you like to come? Oh, thank you. But I could never see Shorty married to another woman. He's so cute. And we've had such fun together. Yeah, Shorty says you two likes to go dancing. Oh, he's a marvelous dancer. Oh, and so cuddly. <laughs> well, you've had your last dance with little cuddly. <laughs> what a pity. Mr. Clavin, what a pleasant surprise. Welcome, welcome. We are honored by your presence. Was we supposed to bring presents? <laughs> bring <Ready> shoes. <laughs> no, no, I simply meant... Oh, come, come in, come in. Thank you. We just dropped by to invite the both here to Shorty's wedding. Ah. So he's finally marrying Alverna. Ooh. That's right. When is the happy event? Well, the happy event uh, was yesterday when Shorty locked herself in your secretarial pool. Uh, the wedding's tomorrow. <laughs> Three o'clock. Can you come? The chief? Oh, we'll be there if Shorty doesn't run away again. Oh, that's all over and done with. Shorty can't wait for the ceremony. Really? You ought to see him, Miss Jane. He's just like a caged bear. <laughs> silver like other people. <laughs> he wisely decided this would be more useful. Oh, it's beautifully constructed. He built it himself. Don't let Chad tell her he has to be a blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> you got no one to blame but yourself. You had to go running away, going to see those pretty secretaries at the bank. You call them girls pretty? Why, compared to you, they's a bunch of scarecrows. <laughs> Mind you keep going to see them. Nobody enjoys seeing you all the more, sweetie pie. After you look at a bunch of turkeys, you appreciate the peacock. <laughs> you gorgeous creature. <laughs> Stop that. Your regular love got it. <laughs> Drive a man wild. If I was out there, I'd grab you and kiss you. Oh, well, if you feel that way, I'll unlock the cage. That's my sweet baby. <laughs> and come inside with you. Forget it. <laughs> Folks are talking. I don't want to sell your lily white reputation. You're right, dear. We'll both be strong. I'll finish preparing your lunch. I'm baking your cake. But I saw in it. What was that? Uh, I said I saw it. It's a beauty. I'll put the truck around back. All right, boy, but remember, don't let Shorty out of that cage. I won't. He's a tricky little rascal. Be careful he don't outsmart you. Outsmart me? <laughs> Did you hear that, Uncle Jed? I heard it. Hey, this here is a sixth grade brain. Hey, ain't no little country rube like Shorty Kellum is going to outsmart this. Uh, I got an IQ that's way up yonder. I'm what you call a giant intellect. All right, giant, just don't let the man out of the cage. <laughs> what does that mean when you do that? Oh, that there is sign language. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> hey, Jethro. Now, don't think you can get me letting you out of that cage, because you can't. Too smart for that. Oh, I know that. I got me a giant brain sitting up here betwixt my ears. <laughs> I bet it's a beauty. I sure would like to have me a look at it. How would you do that? By looking in your ear. <laughs> can you see a brain that way? Sure, did you know that? <laughs> My eyes being on the front of my head, my ears on the side, I ain't never been able to look in at my own brain. I sure would like to see that rascal, though. Well, I'll unlock this door and I'll come out and take a peek and tell you what it looks like. Oh, no. I ain't letting you out of there. I'm too smart for that. Okay. I'm coming in and you can take a look at my brain. <laughs> can't wait to get a glimpse of that thing. It must be a monster brain. Oh, yeah. Lots of folks that ain't seen it. Says I got the brain of a monster. <laughs> 
kind of hunker down so I can get a look. Okay. Uh, face this way so the light will come inside. Now, hold real still. <laughs> in there to see your brain. I'm going to go get a flashlight. <laughs> but I wasn't supposed to let you out. You didn't. I let myself out. <laughs> oh. Well, in that case, Uncle Jed can't get mad at me. Of course he can. See you later. <laughs> hey, Shorty. Yeah, Jethro. Granny said not to let you outsmart me. You didn't, did you? How could I outsmart a brain like yours? <laughs> <laughs> what am I worried about? <laughs> Shorty, you're gonna... Get it. What are you doing in there? Waiting for Shorty to come back with a flashlight. Hey, what does he need with a flashlight? He's gonna shine it in my ear, see if he can catch a glimpse of my giant brain. <laughs> he told you that? Well, yes, sir. Can't hardly blame him for wanting to see what's inside this head. True. I've been wondering what's in there myself. <laughs> All right, come on out, boy. Well, Chief, I'm afraid I have bad news for you. Shorty Callums is in the secretarial pool. How did you know? I expected it. But this time I'm ready for him. I deputized one of my employees. And I venture to say he's under arrest at this very moment. Listen. <laughs> Don't turn me into Mr. Price. We can skip out of here and have some fun. Sorry, Shorty. There's a reward for your arrest, and I can use it. But, Sweetie Pie. Besides, there's no future for me. You're getting married tomorrow. That gives us 24 hours, baby. <laughs> we'll paint the town red. We'll have the fling of fling. Burn the candle at both ends. Just dance the night away. <laughs> no sale. I need that reward. <laughs> here he is, Mr. Drysdale. Good work, Gloria. I accuse this officer of police brutality and cruelty. <laughs> what did she do? She won't do nothing. That's what's the cruel. Do I get my reward now? We'll discuss that later. Okay, Shorty, now you're in for it. Don't hurt him. I'm not afraid of him. You think you're going to make me crawl in front of her? You've got another thing coming. Let's go. What are you going to do? Lock me in the vault, beat me with a bag of nickels? <laughs> uh, you can't scare me, Drysdale. I'm turning you over to Alverna Bradshaw. No, no. <laughs> not that, please. I promise you, I'll never come back. I'll never bother you again. Give me another chance. Please, no, have mercy. I can't take it. Please. It's awful when they crack like that. Chief, <laughs> look at Shorty's car. He'll certainly never escape in this. Yeah, I'll say he won't. It looks like yeah. the handiwork of that master blacksmith, Mr. Heller. It is. <laughs> Well, thanks for fetching over the prisoner. I mean, the groom. I hereby remand him into your custody, Mr. Pavitt. Now, I hope you can keep him secure until the wedding. Well, I'll do my best, but I sure am going to miss old Shad. Mayor Heller's gone? Yes, ma'am. He had to go back to Silver Dollar City. See, with everybody gone, the population's dropped down to 24. I, I don't understand. Well, he's got to go back to get it back up to 25 so that the town can qualify for government aid. <laughs> I wish we might have said au revoir. Two of the most beautiful words in the whole language. Chief, au revoir is French. I was talking about government aid. <laughs> well, come on in, everybody. You're just in time for the wedding rehearsal. Oh. You mean you ain't gonna put me back in the cage? That's right. You're gonna practice with Alberta, saying I do. Put me back in the cage. <laughs> ready, Mr. Closet and Bride? I'm ready. Ready, willing, and anxious. <laughs> Very well. This man will enter with groom. <laughs> If I'm going to be handcuffed to the best man, could we get one with shorter legs? Well, do walk more slowly, Jethro. Can't we skip this and rehearse the part where we eat? Do not rehearse the reception, Jethro. Now, when Mr. Clavett reaches your side, you will unlock the manacle from your wrist and handcuff the groom to the bride. Don't you even trust me to stick around during the ceremony? <laughs> orders are orders. Now, Mr. Clavett, uh, when, when you give the bride away, perhaps I'd better come up there and explain it to you. Jethro! We best rehearse the part where you unlock the handcuff. Good idea. Did she say to unlock yours or mine? Mine. Okay. Hey, say, Jethro, look up there. Huh? The way the shadow hits that wall, it looks exactly like a girl taking a sun bath. 
see very little difference. <laughs> Jethro, it won't go through the bars. 
Paul Duke, I'll throw it out on the ground. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. I'll come in and get it. <laughs> Shorty, I have your word of honor that you won't leave this cage. My word of honor, that is the last thing on my mind. Okay. <laughs> Secretarial pool. And you were supposed to give me a reward. Okay, okay. If Shorty shows up again and you arrest him and bring him here, you'll get the reward. How much? How does 50 sound to you? It sounds beautiful. Hey, that's your reward. 50. Swell. You're actually going to give her $50? I never mentioned the word dollar. A reward is a birthday cake. A birthday cake? When she's 50, she gets it. <laughs> Rotten to the core. Rotten. The rich. <laughs> well, Shorty, I hope you had... Did you get through? I have it, Jim. What are you doing in there? Eating Duke's lunch. <laughs> well, it was Shorty's lunch, and he was going to give it to Duke. And I talked him into giving it to me. Shorty outsmarted you again. Uh, maybe. This time it come out even. I outsmarted Duke. <laughs> oh, you are one of a kind. You betcha. I wasn't behind the door when the brains was passed out. I wonder if you was even in the room. <laughs> What's the matter? Good news. Mr. Drysdale just called. And that three-day waiting law has been revoked. Now Vernon and Shorty can get married right away. The Shorty, darling, come on out, sweetheart. We're going to get married immediately. <laughs> and Angel! Oh, oh, honey, lamb! He's gone. That little worm. <laughs> Mr. Clement, Melvin Drysdale. You got my good news? Well, Shorty and Alverna can become bride and groom immediately. Well, yes, sir, except for one thing. We ain't got no groom. Don't worry about that. I've got him. He's sitting here handcuffed to my deputy. And listen, this time let's take no chances. We'll have the wedding right here in my office. My doggies, that's a dandy idea. I'll get dude it up and fetch a bride right over. Miss Hathaway's already on her way to pick you up. Yes, I've even sent for the judge. This time there'll be no slip-up. Hmm? See you here. Bye. <laughs> Under no circumstances are you to unlock those handcuffs, understand? Yes, sir. Good. How about my 50? Don't worry, you'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gloria, I reckon this is it. Yes. I'm sorry, Shorty. Not as sorry as I am. We had such good times together. We sure did. How about one last dance? I'd love it. <laughs> come in, come in. Judge Marshall should be here any minute. He's a very busy man, but as a favor to me, he's going to squeeze in this ceremony. Well, he's mighty grateful to you for arranging everything. My pleasure. Well, there you are, Judge Marshall. I'd like you to meet Jed Clampett, and this is the blushing bride, Elverna Bradshaw. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale says you're a busy man, Judge, so we're ready when you are. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to come back. I don't have time to perform another wedding right now. Another wedding? Yes. I just married the happy couple in your office. <laughs> Will you keep your voice down? We're on a honeymoon. <laughs> I want this marriage annulled immediately. I'll see to it. Shorty. 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 But you don't get You know the code of the hills. Your promise to Alberta Bradshaw. Your marriage to Gloria has got to be annulled. Okay, Jed. Black Hat and 
Black boots, black belt. Bad news for the bad guy.